Welcome everyone, welcome our friends as well. It's great to see so many of you here. I'm sure Peter would have been amazed. And you told us you didn't have any friends. <laughs> Just crazy. <laughs> do have a seat, do have a seat everyone. Oh, what an amazing day. And uh, I hope you're appreciating the, the cool of the inside. So as you know, Peter requested a non-religious service. So just before we start, proper a word, if I may, uh, to any who might be concerned about us being here in a church and being led by a vicar. I first met Peter eight years ago. He came to visit me as his parish priest to tell me something of his life and his thoughts about God. And he began our conversation with, I am an atheist and a snob. And that's how he started. <laughs> but he was obviously okay with this council house oik from Watford uh, in, in holy orders and we became good friends and I always felt well, I like to think that to Peter I was the acceptable face of religion so it's a real privilege to be able to be here together today we meet in this building not necessarily because of its purpose but its beauty it's the oldest church in Bath and I always liked I know that into, into these ancient walls are soaked the pain and the petitions and the praise of a millennium. People of all beliefs and none. And to give you a geographical context, um, Cavendish Crescent is about a mile in that direction and Lambrook Court is about a mile in that direction. So we're in his locality. So I hope for you that the church's beauty and its local context are okay with you. And what we all want is for everyone to feel at home and happy. And it will be a non-religious service as Peter wanted. And the alternative was gathering at Haycom Crematorium. It's perfectly functional, but a municipal space. And I'm sure that Peter would have described it in his inimitable, colorful way. I'll just leave a gap for you to fill those words in yourself. <laughs> so we gather one in a wonderful array of colours uh, as many parts of Peter's life. And many of us may have known about one another, but certainly haven't met. And it's great to be able to, to meet. And obviously later as well, we'll be able to do that. Because what unites us is our love of this amazing man. We're thinking as well, before we start, about those who can't be here. Um, and others who will be watching on the video recording at a later time, especially we remember Penny in South Africa, and she wrote to say that she'll be walking in a park right now. So bless you, Penny, and thinking of us all. 
and she wanted you all to know that she and Peter were on really good terms in recent times. And that goes for all of us really, chatting to many of you in preparation for today. We're all thankful that our last times with Peter were so good, that he'd found this positivity and a, a comfortable place of peace that was a delight to see. And it, I mean, I, met, I remember it was being like seeing the sun come out from behind some particularly dark clouds. We saw Peter as he was at his best, sharp, bright, funny, generous, creative. Of course, we will remember the more challenging times that we've had, but Peter, we're here because we love you for who you are. As Jan and Wynne, Charles, Michael and I were preparing for today, one thing became clear, that it will be woven together with the most beautiful music. So we'll keep a bit of quiet together. I'll say some words and then Charles will play for us some Schubert, which he's chosen for today. So a moment of quiet for us. Spirit of love, the oneness of all things. You are the silence of the heart of all that is. You are the stillness of our memories. You are the rise and fall of our hearts. You are the flow within us and between us. Mm -hmm. Love, you are the mystery at our beginning and the quiet at our ending. You are the fragile risk that we must take in loving for all that we might lose. The loss of Peter is unchosen by us and unwanted. As we remember how we loved him and he us, be our comfort, especially for Michael. And may we have the strength to let him go into peace where all is one. Because you, Spirit of love will never die.
Sue Trevor wasn't able to make the journey from North Wales, sadly, but it's wonderful that she's written something um, about Peter, her good friend, and uh, has asked me to read it. And after I've read this, there'll be a chance, an informal chance for anyone who'd like to contribute something in memory or story or just a thought about Peter, then there'll be a chance for you to do that, again, just informally sitting where you are. Peter, as you know, was a fantastic embroiderer. So think of it as weaving your thread into Peter's tapestry. Dearest Peter, says Sue, after 59 years of deep friendship, adieu. We have laughed and laughed together until we nearly split our sides and we have anguished and wept together too. We have shared time together in Basel, Switzerland, where we worked in the early 1960s and skied together in Austria and Switzerland. I just love imagining Peter skiing. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> We've been together in South Africa, in England, Scotland and Wales, all full of happy times and memories. I wish you had enjoyed a less complicated life and had experienced more peaceful times. But over all these years, your very dry sense of humour and unparalleled wit have shone through and given us such joy. You could be really difficult too, but equally you could be the most kind and generous of persons and the very, very best of company. We shall miss your encyclopedic knowledge of fine art antique furniture and silver, your skill in gardening and your innate good sense of taste and style. In fact, we will simply miss you very, very much. I hope where you are now, you will never feel lonely again and you will be surrounded by sublime music. Dearest Pete, I like to think this is not goodbye but I'll feed the same. Thanks, Sue. Would anyone like to weave a thread? Oh. Yeah, thank I'll you. I'll stick my head in the lion's mouth. Do. <laughs> um, my, my role in Peter's life was as his portfolio manager. Um, and I, I suppose I've known him for about 15 years now. He was a man of firm views, um, and not always what one might call woke. <laughs> uh, he was extremely impulsive, um, which as a money manager is not always ideal. Um, but above all, I remember him for, well actually two things I remember him for now. The, 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 and perhaps the, the most recent one is how well he managed to hide his long-lasting friendships. Um, <laughs> as increasingly he said he was alone in this world. Um, but above all, I think I remember him for his generosity. Um, because one of, uh, well, one of the first things that, that happened when on, on meeting him was um, that my wife and I were invited to his seventh birthday party in Poland, New Zealand, which Charles will remember, and I suspect more than you will. Um, and thereafter, he was forever taking me out for lunch, uh, spending his money um, uh, when perhaps he shouldn't have been. But uh, so lovely, generous character. Thank and that's you. How I lovely. Thanks so much. Actually, good for me, not just for me being good for him, 
is that he reminded me to think about what are the elements that make life happy. And um, he, when I first met him, it was very unusual, he moved into Cavendish Crescent and I was sitting in the community garden, which was beautiful, and a sunny day with my computer, and his voice says to me, sitting on a chair sort of nearby, very silly chair, Gordon June, you're not allowed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, why not? And he said, you don't live here, you shouldn't be here. And I went, oh, I do live here. <laughs> oh. And he says, he stopped for a minute, and then he burst into tears. And I said, I'm so sorry, have I hurt your feelings or something? He said, no, nobody talks to me here. And I said, well, I will, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> so sitting outside his flat now, wouldn't he? Because <laughs> <laughs> he drove up, you just see him sitting there. saw him quite, quite near the end, didn't you? Well, I used to go every Tuesday. Yeah. I spent four hours with him in the, in the new place. Yeah. So, sometimes five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, doing everything. Yeah. But I remember once when he was at the, um, I was like, at the Crescent, and we, um, I'd gone in in the morning and he was in bed, and I tried to wake him up, and he wouldn't wake up. I knew he was all right because he was breathing and everything. So I just got on and done some stuff for him and left. And I got a phone call and I could say, you're sacked. You never came in to work today. <laughs> but, you know, he took me back. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> was it just once he sacked you? Yeah. Oh, was that right? <laughs> did you do well then? <laughs> great, thank you, Teresa. That's great. Yeah, Malcolm. How many of you knew... Peter as a cook. Oh, uh, yes. 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 Yes.
food of husbands whose wives have died. It's been revolutionized their lives. Bear that in mind. <laughs> he prepared it and he said, all I have to do is put it in the oven and it'll be ready in 20 minutes. And uh, he went down to the other end of the room. Yeah. The kitchen was one end, wasn't it? The dining room. Yeah. Yeah. And the other end was the other end. <laughs> um, after quite a long time, he came back to be very worried. He said, the oven's broken. <laughs> we can't do anything. The woman he got to very worried, thinking, what's the quickest way to the door? <laughs> he said, just give me ten minutes. And from somewhere, because there was no other room in that flat, was there except the bedroom mm -hmm. and the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was this mm -hmm. most compact flat I ever have been into. Um, <laughs> And he went splashing around with this, that, and the other. And within 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour, he produced a perfect two course meal. He had smoked salmon and something else that he'd got. So he'd obviously got a whole store of food there <laughs> ready for emergencies. <laughs> he wasn't just a poor old bachelor with nothing to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he was a very good cook, actually. Well, yeah. well I, I, tend to never, I defer to theory for that. I never like yeah. to give opinions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was a jolly good provider of Thank you, everybody. A wonderfully woven and beautiful tapestry. Martin Sherry has suggested the following piece of music as uh, something that Peter particularly liked. And Evelyn, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for singing for us. Oh, 
Peter always said, I'll have to come and hear you preach one day. <laughs> he didn't, but that's, that's fine, that's fine. So I'm not, I'm not preaching now, but a short reflection, Peter, if I may. And I, I love the, the occasional gift you, you gave to me. It was always so perfectly chosen, so exquisite. And I hope that you'll like this poem um, by Rumi, who was a Sufi poet in the 13th century. It's very short. Why paint night over a nightless day? Every religion has love, but love has no religion. Love is an ocean, no borders, no shores. Drown there and you won't lament it. The drowned have no regrets. It's wonderful, having led quite a few funerals in my time, that we can remember Peter honestly. Many of us, when we were with him, as we've heard, heard the lament, oh, I've got no friends, to be followed by several phone calls. <laughs> and then just looking at the cards on the mantelpiece and on the windowsills that prove the opposite. And many of us felt that we were satellites, part of his orbiting friendship circle. And I'm sure that each of us, in our own way, was a place of comfort to him, an ocean. Safe places in which people, in which Peter could express his sadnesses and his regrets, as well as all the lovely things that Sue and all of us have been saying or thinking. All of us people with whom he could share his favourite descriptive. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> in short, people who stayed the course, as we said, in spite of it all, whether an occasional contact or more often in person or by phone. Each of us have our own stories of Peter towards the end, we've heard several and that's wonderful. And Michael's acknowledgement that their reconciliation happened here in Bath is wonderful as well. All of us have a sense of that peace, that nightless day, as Ruby said. And of course we know and we recognise this as the work of love. And we all have different names for love. For some it is God, for others it isn't. But love goes beyond what we may believe or not, as the poem said. Love is unseen and eternal. Love, the jewel of humanity, beyond boundaries and religion, but has a very real place in our lives. It's our raison d'etre. Love forms us and shapes us. Love fulfills us. Love connects us to others and to ourselves. Love enables us to celebrate the joys of life as well as finding resilience and strength in the harder times. Love which holds gratefully life's fragility. And for me, the opposite of faith is not doubt, it's certainty. And nobody knows what happens when we die. But we have these amazing gifts of imagination and wonder I once heard an imam talking about what happens after death. He was on the stage with a bishop and a rabbi, which sounds a bit like a joke, <laughs> but he, uh, he didn't say very much. Um, but then at the end, when he was summing up, he said, well, for me, it's like this. Imagine talking to a baby in a womb and you'd say, are you happy? And the baby would say, yeah, thanks. I'm really happy. Thanks. I'm warm. I've got food. I've got this lovely floaty thing going on, it's fantastic. And then you'll say, well, that's great, but what awaits you when you're born is even better. When you're born, you'll say, there are sunsets and sunrises, each one unique. There's the evening light on Bath Stone. There's Schubert, 
there's Radio 3, there's music and art, there's painting, there's the joy of books in English, French and German, ideas and thoughts, the perfection of that finest stitch, the blessing of a garden, the plants of such delight, beautiful objects and shared knowledge, the sitting out with a glass of the best wine, reflecting on the day, there's grinding coffee, and friends so deep and various, great times and trips and holidays in South Africa and France and Vienna, the sea, meals out together, and love and sex and affection and family, and all those little moments that make life so rich and so full. And this baby would listen maybe try and understand, but then would rock forward in its fluid suspension and be happy. A baby can't imagine the journey to the outside of the womb any more than we can imagine what's beyond death. But we can choose to use that great gift of wonder, the mystery of love that we know now in the marvel and the muddle of our humanity. We might hold that hope of something rather than nothing. Not goodbye, but our fidesain. That our lives are longer than the number of our days. And I love these words by the Irish writer, John O'Donoghue. As a river flows into the sea, there is a sense of it no longer being a river. It may be seen to decay into the ocean, and there may be sadness for that, its course has been run. But there is no break from one to another, but a flow. And it becomes what it was always meant to be, bigger, deeper, wider than it ever imagined. We'll hold a bit more quiet, I'll say some words and Charles is going to play for us again. So let's be quiet for a moment as we hold our thankfulness for Peter inside our hearts, as we remember how he was for us. Let's hold him in that peace that he found. Let's remember especially Michael and Penny and one another, all of our lives, the richer for him. And may we be merciful to ourselves, find peace in any memory of regret or failure, as we hold our sadness and our thankfulness.
for the service you're welcome for refreshments. The Priory was closed today so we're slumming it at the Royal Crescent Hotel. Um, I think 3.30 I think we're, we're there so do make your way down there. Uh, there's a chance for you to give in Peter's memory to the work of mind as you go out as well. Peter's going to be uh, taken from here and cremated and the um, Hakem is, is being uh, refurbished at the moment so nobody can attend. But I think that's a blessing because we'll say goodbye to him here in this beautiful space. And what I thought would be lovely at the end, um, we'll, Peter will be carried out, follow out. Why don't you line up along the, either side of the track and then he can drive through the middle of you and you can wish him farewell as he comes past. That would be wonderful. Got a few more words to say and then Evelyn's going to sing for us again. <coughs> Though Peter is taken from our eyes, may we find him always in the heaven hereabout. May we see him in the evening light and the company of people he loved. May we hear him in Schubert and the music that fed him. May we sense him in gardens and all places of life and love. May we feel him in the memories of time shared and know he is with us always, now his spirit dances free. Dear Peter, go on your journey from this world. Go lightly now your burden shed to the mystery of life before us, where no harm has ever reached. Go in the name and the presence of love, and may you dwell in peace.
so we bid Peter farewell, as we commit his body to be returned to the elements of this good earth, in the keeping of love, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. May you who have belonged with us here rest in eternal belonging. You who have left the shadows of this world behind, rise on the wings of nightless day, and may you rest in peace. And the deep peace of the quiet earth to you, the deep peace of the running wave to you, the deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the spirit of peace to you, this moment and always. We have a slight change of plan. We'd ask if you could stand and leave now, then we'll bring Peter out into our midst. Thank you. <laughs>
Anyway, oh, it's so lovely to see you again. Oh, and I love to see you. Oh, it's you liking you all. Oh, really? Yeah, I now want one like that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no <worries. laughs> I'm ordering it. Hopefully, a long time in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they may not even be around. But oh, yeah. God, I say, Paul, I, I'm not sure I got your child as well, so I'll have to go quickly so that you can say it by funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. We'll yeah. just have to last a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. So glad people said things as well. Yeah. Yeah, once they got going, it's fine. Things look amazing. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, real kind of paper is on last year. It's not a real character. It was, but it's lovely. It's, um, yeah, I've never really picked Yuri to get these kids from back then again. It's so um, just like really he was married for a while, but... Married for a woman? Yeah, and then... Married for a lady. Yeah. 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 But lovely, 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 lovely. Did he find a man? No. Oh.